Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's 100% Baldur's Gate 3, the Dirge playthrough, the Dark Urge playthrough. Loving it so far. Hope you're enjoying it. If you are, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the bell, turn on. all helps out this channel and series to grow. Thank you to those who do that, and consider checking out the Patreon and the Twitch if you would like to go lay extra epic mile uh we have just gotten done with the chapel we met bill withers as i like to call him and now we are going to ascend the iron ladder the iron ladder uh and then this leads us to the hatch uh if you remember we are back over here can you believe it uh so let's take a look at the world map once we get up here and take a look at what we can see, what we can do, where we should be, where the heck are you? This game is so pretty and colorful, man. I love games that have color. Games these days are so afraid to have color, I swear. They're so bland. Not pointing any fingers at a certain big AAA release. Not at all. Uh, okay, so let's see what we can do. So it's kind of tricky. I really do wish the map like would show you where you can't go for instance i don't think you can go right here um but we can go north here we've done everything over here we've done everything over here the only thing we haven't done is talk to that one boar as far as i remember so we can fast travel literally yeah a step over here uh and now the question is do we want to switch out any members at our camp do we want to go to camp? Everybody's full up on HP. Huh. Also, we did do everything in the tube, right? Yes. We did do everything in the tomb and in the chapel, as far as I remember. Do we want to switch? I guess not. No, I do want to use different party members than the ones that I've used in my other main playthrough, the one on Twitch, uh, which... I guess I can say who they are if we've met everybody. We haven't met one of the party members. I don't want to spoil who that is. Uh, we also have a crushed spike trap here, which we will not interact with. Have we been? Yeah, I guess that's where the dead mind flare was, or the mind flare that was alive until we killed him. Um, so I think we're going to go this way, where you can see in the top right, there is some fog of war. We're going to grab this I shovel here. We Do you check now? It out, but be careful. Well, hold on. We've got a dirt mound to dig, so just wait a second. Uh, we've got a treasure chest in this dirt mound, which has fire amber, an alchemical ingredient, war fang, an alchemical ingredient, and 40 gold. A g unit. It's 2.10 in the morning, by the way, so if we're getting a little loopy doopy, that's why, just so you know. Uh, Emerald Grove Environs oh, Waypoint really Discovered. That is one of the things we want to do for the 100% is to find all of the waypoints. Also, we're going to look down there and see if we can travel down there. I don't think we can jump down there or do anything. So we're going to go this way where we hear the shouting. And keep in mind, you can obviously prepare anytime you hear shouting and stuff like that. You can obviously cast buffs and do whatever you want to do. For the most part, my style is to just run in and uh, figure it Open out. Open the bloody gate! Nobody gets in! Zevlor's orders! That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gate, Zevlor, now! You let goblins here? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! Nine hells! Open the gates! the blade and suffer its sting 
cool intro, my dude. Commence battle. Concussive smash on a ward. We've got a bugbear who's going to deal seven damage to whoever that was. We've got hamstrung shot on the goblin. And now it is our turn. So, question is, are we forced to choose sides here? I mean, of course... If we're being a goody two-shoes, we don't want to be siding with nasty goblinses. Do we? Do we? Do we? Uh, anyways, we've got Shadowheart here. Let's go ahead and use her to bless everybody. The target gains a plus, D plus one D4 bonus to ability checks, which I guess doesn't really matter in combat. Or does it? Perhaps it does. Uh, we really should have long rested. I just realized this is where I realized I done messed up. Uh, what else do we have? Sacred Flame Evocation tran Cantrip. One to eight damage uh, radiant. We've got Invoke Duplicity. Class action. It uses a channel divinity charge, which is this right here. Recharge on short rest. Distract your enemies with an illusion within three meters of the illusion. Attack rolls have advantage for you and your allies. Is this casted on us? Ah, we can cast the... Wait, what? No way. Not enough movement. Yeah, how far can we cast this thing? Oh, okay, so here's the circle here. Interesting. Yeah, so we probably want to do this, right? If I'm reading this right, distract your enemies with an illusion within three meters of the illusion. Attack rolls have advantage for you and your allies. Everybody that's green here, I'm assuming, is an ally. So, I think we're going to do that. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, this is an action and uses our channel divinity. Let's go ahead and... Do we want to use any other bonus action? Firebolt. Can't use that as a bonus action. Let's jump. This might be dumb. Actually, I'm just going to move. Yeah, let's just move with Shadowheart. And then we're going to cast Invoke Duplicity. Uh, crap. This isn't really going to work all that well. Well, I guess we can do it with this guy, Ramira, or girl. Can't really tell. Let's go ahead and conjure an image over there. So now anybody within three meters of this gets bonus whatever. Uh, we can also dip. We can also shove. We're going to end our turn. We've got a ward here, which deals a critical miss. We've got a goblin booyog. What an utter fool. Goes for the duplicitous... Uh, mirror image. What an utter fool. We got some goblins up here on the hill, so with a starin, uh, I think we will... Man, we really don't have much movement at all, huh? Hmm. I think we want to get the high ground with a starin. So the question is, can we jump up to here? Can't reach destination. But what can you do, a starion? I guess we'll just try to move over... Oh, I'm so dumb. We should have used the dash action. Whoopsie-daisy. Uh, so we've still got our cunning action dash and our dash. So I think what we'll do is we'll be smart. We'll use our action to dash. And we'll dash over here. And then we'll use our bonus action to cunning action hide. Like so. Also, we're going to uh, we're gonna go to passives. No, we're going to go here. Toggle dual wielding. Why is this not letting me toggle? I'm assuming it's just because we don't have any actions to use or anything. Okay, next up we have Zevlor. A Hell Rider Exile. He is going to blow the horn and rally everybody, which I don't know what that means, although we can check on the left side. Zakrug is going to shout out a threat and deal six damage to Aradin. Yeah, go for it, man. Do your arms of Hadar. Four damage. The war gets a save, unfortunately. Six damage on whoever that was. Goblin Tracker is going to shoot Shadowheart and miss. Going to shoot Shadowheart and deal three. Next up, we've got Gale. What do we want to do with Gale? Gale has no spell slots, so that's not cool. Uh, what is this? Arcane Recovery Charge. The number and level of spell slots the Arcane Recovery Action can restore. You cannot restore spell slots above fifth level. Excuse me? What is that? Yeah, do do that. What is this? Arcade Recovery can only be cast outside of combat. Replenish spell slots while outside of combat. I did not even know that was a thing. Interesting. All right, so we can only really do Firebolt and Ray of Frost. We can only really do cantrips here. So I think we move in with Gale. Thank you for the follow to my Twitch channel. I have to remember to shut off all alerts. Jeez Louise. I'm such a fool. 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and use fire bolts. Reduce the target's movement speed. Yeah, these guys up here in the hill are not gonna be moving. So let's use fire bolt here. 55% chance to hit, 55% chance to hit. Both seven HP. Uh, I like those odds. Go! Three damage. Yeah, Yahoo! Yahoo, we got Barth here. Who's going to piercing strike the goblin dealing four. He's gonna miss. He's gonna apply gaping wounds. With our warlock now, we want to long range snipe with Eldritch Blast. The question is, who do we use it on? Probably the Goblin Brawler. 65% chance to deal 4 to 13 damage. We need a 5 here. We get a 5, 6, 7. Excellent. Can't dip our weapon in anything. Also, how does attacking with a spear work? Do you just do a main... Can you throw the spear? I mean, it definitely said you could throw the spear. I don't know. We'll figure that out. End turn. We've got Adadine, who misses the Goblin. Action Surge, another miss. Oof, not looking good. Gets an opportunity attack for five. They're gonna throw a Javelin on Ramira here. Who's gonna get back up? Now it is Shadow Heart's turn again. What can Shadow Heart do? Resistance, make a target more resistant to spell effect and conditions. It receives a plus one D4 bonus to saving throws. That's a big meh. Blessing of the Trickster, grant another creature advantage on stealth checks. Could be good with a uh, star room uh guidance and sacred flame hmm but firebolt's better than sacred flame right one to ten damage one to eight damage yeah but this deals radiant damage this deals fire damage so i guess if one's more resistant to another or whatever uh let's move up here and then we will wait what prone what is this grease since when there's grease on the dang old floor what the actual heck Sometimes the game freezes, by the way. It'll just freeze like this. Like when the AI is going, hmm, what should I do? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I maybe do this? Okay, we've got a star on here. We can hold shift, although it's already doing the, uh, I guess, because we're in hiding. It's already doing the, um, the sight lines. So we can sneak up on these goblins here. Uh, let's go about here. And then if you would be so kind, use a sneak attack ranged 88% chance. We need four damage here. And we get 10. Fantastic job. Uh, let's go ahead. Yeah, I'm assuming. Okay, so we had to click the dagger to turn off dual wielding. There we go. Uh, okay, so then we're going to right click to go back to these. And we're going to cunning action hide again. So they can't see him. Next up, we got Zevlor, who's going to ranged attack this guy for 12. Dang, that's a lot of damage. Uh, Zakug is going to miss and then deal 5 as well as Bane. He's going to Reckless War Cry, which I'm not sure what that does. Oh, yeah, I wanted to check what this does, too. Reckless War Cry. Will is going to get Opportunity Attack for 11. Then use Arms of Hadar for 8 and 5 and Heal for 6. We've got a range attack on Dirge, who's going to use Hellish Rebuke and deal 12, instantly killing that goblin. That was pretty sick. Uh, next up, can we use the help action? Oh, you can use the help action to help somebody up from prone, but Shadowheart's just going to take a nap for now. Let's move up with Will, or sorry, Gale. And with Gale, we're going to use Firebolt. Uh, we could use Ray of Frost as well. If we wanted to reduce somebody's movement speed. We've got a bugbear at 20 HP. We've got Zakrug at 13. We've got Warg at 15. And there's no other goblins over here, right? Yes. So who do we want to go for? Mm, we can't kill anybody. But we can reduce... 70% chance to hit the Warg, actually. Let's do that. Ignis for 4 damage. Can't dip our weapon. Can't shove on the turn. We got Barth here. Piercing shot on Zakrug, which misses. What does he have? Like a little hand crossbow? What the heck was that? Uh, that looked like a little hand crossbow. Yeah. All right. We're going to move over here. A step. We are going to use Eldritch Blast on the war. We're looking for 11 damage here with a 70% chance to hit. Uh, we deal nine damage. Close. Close, close, close. Aradine, go for the war, you fool. Aradine's only at... Oh, somebody's really low. Who is it? Someone's only at like two HP. Oh, it's the warg. Okay, we've got Shadowheart here, who unfortunately does not have a ranged attack. Actually, not true. They can use Firebolt. 55% chance to do 2 damage to the Warg. 
And we deal one. Shadowheart. You're almost off the team. I'm going to be real with you. Warg is going to bite Will for 10. How's Will doing? I like how they give Will like 15,000 HP. Or maybe not. Maybe they just give him the same amount. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, we're going to move up with a star. And we are going to have the high ground and use a sneak attack range. We need to do one damage for 80% chance. Uh, what? I did not click them. What the heck just happened? We're going to cunning action hide again, I guess. Okay. Zevlor. Range attack on Warg for 12. He is dead. Zakrug uses main hand attack. 6 plus 4 damage. Will is going to heal for 7. Eldritch blast the bugbear and miss. It is now Gale's turn. Gale is going to use... 55% chance to hit that. What about this? 55% chance to hit. What about main hand attack? 35% chance to hit. So we're going to go for Firebolt. Uh, actually, we're going to go for Ray of Frost. I think this is better because if he gets, if he doesn't die, he at least gets the movement penalty. Critical miss. Fantastic. Come on, Barth. Come on, Barth. You got to land one attack, buddy. We're going to Eldritch Blast again. Dealing four, killing the goblin leader. Now there is just the bugbear left. Oh, he's going to throw a potion onto Barth. This guy's going to take seven plus four damage. He's going to try to shove and it's going to miss. Throw on Aradine a potion. Heal for eight. And now we just have to focus this bugbear down. Let's use Firebolt. 45% chance. What about Sacred Flame? 50% chance. Uh, I think we Firebolt. Yeah, let's firebolt the bugbear. Critical mi- are you- are, are you for real? <laughs> are you, like, actually for real with these critical misses? Uh, we are going to sneak attack the bugbear. 91% chance to hit. And we are going to deal 10 damage. Great job, Astarion. We've got Zevlor, who's going to fire a shot. Deal 3 to the bugbear. This bugbear is, like, at 1 HP. Will is going to kill. Inside! All of you! More may follow! Open the gate! Okay, that fight is huge. Um, very tricky. I mean, not really all that tricky, to be honest with you, but it's, there's just a lot going on. Quite a lot going on. We got a dead bugbear over here. Neither a bug nor a bear, if you ask me, but you know, whatever. Morning Star will take encumbered. You're carrying too much and are encumbered. Your movement and rolls will be negatively impacted until you drop some items. Not good. So we can press tab to open up everybody's menu. And then who in the heck is going to be able to hold some stuff? Who has the most strength? I don't even friggin' know. Inventory and equipment character sheet. How about you? 13 strength? Hmm. I guess we just have to divvy up this stuff a little bit. We are very close to a salesperson. So let's send some stuff to, I guess Gale can hold on to some stuff, maybe the magic pockets. Send to Gale, send to Gale. Where's our big stuff? Shovel, uh, we'll keep the shovel. Morningstar, send to Gale. Uh, we've got a short bow, send to Gale. Gale can have all the stuff. All right, we should be good. Let's get out of here. Uh, so Bugbear. Bugbear has got nothing. Make sure to click on the person you actually want to be controlling to. We've got Goblin Brawler, who has Bottle. We'll pick up an to Wares. We've got Goblin Scimitar. We will send to Shadowheart. Then we've got Zakrug, the Goblin Boss, who has a skull. Sent to Shadowheart. Gloves of Power, Absolute's Bane. On melee hit, possibly inflict a negative 1d4 penalty to the target's attack rolls the same throws. Sleight of Hand plus 1. Who do we give that to? On what? On melee hit? Who is our melee person? I guess Shadowheart right now. We definitely need a fighter, though. Hmm. Yeah, we need someone that's a fighter. We got a magician or a mage or whatever he is, a sorcerer, wizard. We've got a rogue. We've got a cleric. And we've got a warlock. A bit too much magic going on here. We need someone that's like melee damage, fighting damage. Uh, we'll give this to Shadowheart. We've also got a spiked shield we will send to Shadowhearts because she's using a shield. 27 gold as well. Goblin Scimitar. Warg here. 
Two warg fangs. You can craft her in potions, poisons, and elixirs using alchemy. Gather ingredients to distill into extracts and experiment to brew wondrous solutions. Something that I have not yet done at all. Dragon egg mushroom. Goblin scimitar. Sent to a star. Two gold. What's we got a goblin have? tracker over here. What do you have, friend? You have a goblin bow. Sent to Gale. We've got two gold. Hold on. I'm coming. Keep the door open. Keep Swift the door open. Don't you be closing me. the door. So again, why is this guy yellow named? This guy's red named. Why? Why is that? I genuinely don't. I still don't understand the distinction between the yellow and the red names. I thought originally it was like if they were empty and didn't have anything, but that's not it. We've got a ritual staff. We'll send that to Shadowheart. We got a bottle. Pick up an ad to wear seven gold. And then we got two more dudes up here. Let's see what they have or dudettes. I don't know. Goblins are a little bit tricky to tell. No offense. Bone cap is ready. Uh, we'll send that to Gale. We'll take three gold. Over here, we have what? It is going to be a ladle. We've got a goblin bow. And we've got a goblin gold. And now, let us meet our new friends, shall we? Let's go over here to this door and see if they are nice enough to open it. Can't get here. But I can, in fact, get here. Yeah, there we go. The Emerald Grove! Uh, let's run up a little bit and see what's going on over here. Hello? There are children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too! Unbelievable! Druid? Those goblins didn't take any prisoners. We lost him back at the ruins. The whole place is crawling with gobbles. He trusted you. Nobody forced him to go with us. He insisted. And when things got tough, he couldn't keep up. Simple as that. My god, you're a coward. The human's eye twitches. He's about to blow. Melee attack. Take a swing at the tiefling. So this was always confusing to me when I first uh, observed it. Basically, for those not understanding what's happening, this guy is the leader of an adventurer group. Uh, a guy from the grove we're about to enter went with them to adventure. And then this guy is the leader of these tiefling refugees, basically. So we can take a swing at the tiefling. We can aim a blow at the human. Uh, we can do this, or we can do this. Stand back and watch. I feel like we could stand back and watch, maybe? Or we could do persuasion or intimidation. More violence won't bring back those you lost. Stop and think. 15 DC here, so we need a 10. We could add guidance, but it's not that big of a deal. Let's get a 10. Got a 22. Again, this guy just rolls like crazy. You're right. There's too much at stake. Worried about your precious eyes. The both of you. Enough. Squabbling is pointless. The goblins have found us. At least we agree on that. More okay. Goblins could be on their way. Yeah, true. Um, whoa, what are you guys? Oh, they're healing. Okay, so this is where it gets a little interesting. Do we talk to literally everybody? Let me know in the comment section below. I always ask questions like this because I'm genuinely curious how interested people are. There are people that will give you quests, um, but it's kind of hard to tell. The majority of NPCs... I mean, this game is so well done that every NPC talks to you and says something unique, which is crazy for a game at this scale. But yeah, let me know in the comment section below. Do you want to listen to every single NPC in the game? Or would you kind of rather me just find and locate the quests? I don't know. We'll, as usual, begin with talking to everybody. So let's talk to Rick. Not now. Okay, we've got Kaldani. Have some respect. This really isn't the time to talk. I mean, what if I was trying to help or something? We've got Cannon, who it is illegal to loot, so we're not going to do that. Uh, we've got Elegis, or Elegis. Glad you made it inside. Doubt we'll be safe here for long, though. There will be more coming. Goblins hunting packs. 
And you're scared of a few goblins. Pathetic. A few goblins? Felt like a lot more to me. So yes, I'm scared. And I'm not ashamed of that. Good for you. Okay, let's go this way first and check out what's over here. Red Apple Flute, Cannon's Belongings, which we can loot. I don't know if our character is evil in the way of, like, stealing things. In fact, he might find that beneath him to, like, you know, just be evil in, in terms of taking what's not his. Yeah, I don't know if we really need to be doing that. We'll come to that conclusion later, perhaps. Where does this road take us? I actually don't no, who is this? Zevlor. Oh, okay, so it just loops back around here. Now, there is something very cool that you can do, and shout out to my editor. Uh, I edited the first three videos for the series, but in the future, including this very episode, uh, it might be edited by my editor. Shout out to my editor, who wishes to remain anonymous. Who could it be? Who could it be? Uh, because they taught me that there's a thing around here that's that's quite interesting and easy to miss for a lot of people, I would imagine. Also, there is a squirrel called Timber. Let's go talk to him. This squirrel might be the single most adorable creature you can recall in all your stunted memory. It would be ever so twee if it were climbing a tree. Do you always take on such terrifying foes? You stare at the body before you. You have no idea what just happened. Oh my god. <laughs> so I actually failed this before and that happened. But because we're playing Dark Urge, it just happens immediately. I think we just... Hmm? My instincts are sharp, daggered things. Stay out of their way. The swirling bile cauldron of your brain is cooking up a poison stew. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Haunted one, indulge thine appetite. Sturge is inspired from killing Timber the Squirrel. Jeez Louise, look at his little portrait there. Uh, Astarian wants to talk to us after that, which is interesting. Let's talk to him. Huh. You look rabid. Pained. Sick. You're spasming and twitching. Oh, poor thing. Interesting. So I've never experienced this before. This is, uh, specific to the Dark Urge, I'm assuming. Overwhelming violent desires fester in my skull. The norm is to keep dirty thoughts like that to ourselves, but do carry on. <laughs> A feeling deep inside possesses me and whispers murder over and over. It seems you've been dealt a vile hand. I say, play it. Play it for all it's worth. Nobody should deny themselves their true nature. Interesting. Interesting indeed. We'll see how that relationship pans out in the future. Uh, we can overlook a druidic ritual. That's what's going on down there. Uh, we will come to that a little bit later. But for now, let us go this way where something awaits us. Survival failed. That's curious. Ah, ha, ha, ha. This is why it's a little overpowered to have a full party of four. I mean, obviously that's the way the game was designed, but you can find uh, different things like this. Oh, I guess we're doing this now. Okay, so this is a bugbear assassin that... I, what? Why is she dead already? Okay, is it because we took the other... Do you have to be... Why is she... So yeah, this guy kills her, or attempts to, and he's already killed her. I wonder if that's because we're playing a Dark Urge. I, I don't know. That's interesting. Alright, let's move a Starion over here. Yeah, so the only other time, well, two other times I've done this, uh, we've killed the Bugbear Assassin before he was able to 
kill this woman. And I thought that he could only kill this woman if she was in combat and he just attacked her, you know? Uh, Firebolt, 1 to 10 damage. Range attack, 4 to 9 damage. Let's go for range attack. We have a 50% chance to hit. We can also use hamstring shot. Or we can use sneak attack range, but there's no way, right? Must have advantage against the target. So, hamstring shot's the same as a normal shot, except you can only use this uh, once per short rest. Shoot an enemy in the thigh and possibly reduce their movement speed by 50%. We hit for 6, but he saves against the hamstring shot. Now, is there any way to... So, again, I'm holding shift. Are we just able to hide? Yeah, I was going to say, he's in the range of sight. The, the hiding is so weird in this game. Or at least the holding shift to see the... Is it because, like, I've got something clicked? Like, why is it not showing me the, the sight range? I don't know. Anyways, enter. Bugbear Assassin is going to run over to Astarion. Main hand attack misses. Coats his weapon in poison. Interesting. Uh, let's go ahead. We want to make sure our melee attackers are, are, oh, let's also remember to loot this wooden chest. We want to make sure our melee attackers are, um, able to get, like, all around him. Uh, we are going to attack. However, if we click this, we can see that we can also use concussive smash, which is the same thing as main hand attack, except possibly dazes your target. They can't take reactions that are easier to hit. 50% chance to land that. We land it, and he gets dazed as well. One thing that's important is the shove. You can actually shove them over the edge and insta-kill them. I don't know how looting the body works that way, but that is a valid strategy. Uh, let us use, once again, Eldritch Blast. 60% chance to hit because we have the low ground. So let's go ahead and hop up here. And do we, in fact, want to get the high ground? I'm not sure if we can. Eldritch Blast, 70% chance to hit now. We hit for eight. Excellent. And then we've got Gale, who will move over here, and we will use Firebolt. No reason to use Ray of Frost because he's already around us, so I don't think he's going to try to move. 70% uh, chance to hit, and we could kill him here if we get a nine or a ten. We get a miss, unfortunately. We've got a Starion's turn. Uh, we are going to go for, I believe, a melee attack. Wait, we should be able to sneak attack because he is around an ally, right? That should be how it works. 70% chance to deal a sneak attack. We deal it for six. We use our offhand weapon as well, 70% chance. And we hit him for three, and everybody gets a level up. No stop me yet. Fantastic. Let's loot the Bugbear Assassin, who has Rogue's Morsel, Morningstar will send to a story, basic poison, and a gold. Also, let's go grab this uh, treasure chest before I forget. Let's go grab this treasure chest before I forget. There you go, buddy. Uh, we got Potion of Invisibility. I've never used that before. Uh, just haven't really had a chance to use the Potion of Invisibility yet. It's quite worthless with a tired mind. Sleep beckons. I would follow. I know. I know. We're going to take a long rest very soon here. We've got Nadira, who it's illegal to loot. Let us go ahead and hide and loot them regardless. They have got Soul Coins, a treatise. Let's read. Academic disclosure, the research was funded independently and conducted at a site in Avernus, the first plane of the Nine Hells. Candlekeep does not encourage or promote the entrapment of mortal souls. Soul coins, as a concept, are one of the merciless simplicity, the sum of personal and magical essence. The soul is bound into a minted piece of infernal iron and used as currency by devils and their cohort. They are frequently traded for their value, can purchase mercenaries, magical items, and even fuel the strange engines in the Hells. However, there is a fascinating culture surrounding soul coins as well i spoke to a devil who admitted she had one coin that she will never sell for was was for it was the bargain that got her promoted out of lemur status lemur status she connected me to a half elf warlock who had promised his soul to a coin after death i was able to look at his contact which is reproduced below the next 50 pages appear to be painstakingly written legal document in infernal with a headache inducing number of footnotes let us, uh, we will steal. And then we've got Missives of Candle Deep. 
Certain actions are frowned upon by others. Get caught, and you might find yourself in a prison cell. Uh, yes, we've got uh, whatever this is. I'm not going to read this one, but feel free to pause and read. Interesting that they mentioned this person, however. Okay, uh, and I think we'll steal that as well. We've got Scroll of Featherfall, and then we've got a soul coin. Strange, incomprehensible whispers emanate from this coin, pervading your mind with rage and despair. These coins can power infernal engines. Definitely want to take that. So yeah, I am not sure why she died. That is quite interesting, actually. Oh, and I almost forgot. We want to interact with this telescope as well. Peer through the telescope. What could that be? I have no idea. Is that a little butterfly? Could it perhaps be a little butterfly saying butter high? Perception. Perception. Squid at the distant object trying to make out further details. Focus the telescope on the distant object trying to get a clear view. I feel like we would maybe use some like magic or something to squint. Uh, we need a 10 here. We get a 5, unfortunately. I don't think this one is worth to roll again. Thus, we will not. Uh, we could roll again for... Eh, we have four inspirations, but don't think it's worth... I mean, it's a dragon. Like, I, I can tell that without, you know, without... Uh, without squinting the telescope or points to the left. Whatever. Uh, we're going to move the telescope to the left where we see the nautiloid crash. Then we're going to move it back to the right. The telescope points straight ahead. Where we will go back to this guy, which would be great. I like how he just flies back to the same exact location as if he really wants us to see him. It would be great if we could try again. Oh, we can try again. Cool. Okay, so we need a 10 as well. We get a nat 20. Oh my god. You see a dragon circling like a bird of prey. Hunting. Now, if you have paid attention, we're going to move it to the right as well. The telescope points to the right. If you have paid attention... You might know what's related to that red dragon there, which I won't say. Uh, I don't know where that's looking, actually. Oh, I have an idea. Huh. Okay. So that's it for the telescope. The easy yeah, so I don't know why she died. If anybody knows, let me know. Um, is it because we're playing a Dark Urge playthrough, or is it because uh, we were just too late? Interesting, either way, that she died, because I've never seen her die before. Uh, let's go ahead and level up. We got four level ups here to level three, which, like I said, level ups are huge in this game, so very exciting. Level up, Warlock level three. Health is increased from 17 to 24. We get another, oh wait, improved Warlock spells. Most of your Warlock spells have become stronger? Dude, Warlock is so cool. What the heck, man? Okay, gained a passive Pact Boon. Gained a spell, and we can replace a spell. So, which spell do we want to learn? Blindness level 2, Necromancy spell. Limit of foe's sight rage, it is easier to hit, and the creature will miss more often. Cloud of daggers, which apparently is amazing. I have not used this yet. Conjure cloud of spinning daggers that attack anyone inside. Crown of madness. It's still madness in a humanoid enemy, making them attack the creature closest to them, other than you, even if it's allied. So a berserk spell there. Darkness. Create a dark shroud that heavily obscures and blinds creatures within. Creatures cannot make range attacks into or out of it. Enthrall. Reduce a creature's peripheral vision and make it look at you? Hold person. Hold a humanoid enemy still. They can't move, act, or react. Attacks from within three meters are always critical hits. Combo potential there. Invisibility. Touch a creature. Turn invisible. Attacks against it have disadvantage. It attacks with advantage. Sounds overpowered. Condition ends early if the creature attacks or casts a spell. Mirror image. Create three illusory duplicates of yourself that distract attackers. Each duplicate increases your armor class by three? So it increases by nine? What? Sounds overpowered. Misty Step. Huge spell here. Surrounded by Silver Mist, you teleport to an unoccupied space you can use. 
uh, very big there. Raven Feeble Mid Weaken, a foe. They deal half damage with weapon attacks using strength. Scorching Ray, apparently this one's good as well. Hurl three rays of fire. Each ray deals 2 to 12 fire damage. Shatter. Damage all nearby creatures and objects. Creatures made of inorganic materials such as stone have disadvantage on their saving throw. Armor of Agathis, Arms of Hadar, Charm Person, Expeditious Retreat, Hex, Protection from Evil and Good, and Witch Bowl. We're definitely going to go Cloud of Daggers for sure because I've heard that one is good. Pact Boon. Your patron bestows a gift upon you for your loyal service. Choose one of the following packs. God, Warlock is so cool. What the heck? Pact of the Chain. Gain the service of a familiar, a face spirit that takes the form of your choosing. This could be an animal, an imp, or a quasit, whatever that is. Pact of the Blade. You can summon a packed weapon or bind the one you are wielding, making it magical. Packed weapons use the wielder's spellcasting ability modifier instead of strength or dex. <sighs> that would be cool as well. Dang it. Pact of the Tome. Your patron grants you a grimoire called the Book of Shadows, which allows you to cast Guidance, Vicious Mockery, and Thorn Whip. Huh? I kind of like having a little minion. I'm going to be real. Yeah, like a little imp. I don't know what a quasit is. I think we go Pack to the Chain. Pack to the Blade sounds awesome, though. They all sound cool. I don't need more spells, though. I think we go Pack to the Chain here. Pact of the Chain, find familiar, summon a familiar face spirit that takes an animal form of your choosing. Find familiar imp, summon a familiar with the form of an imp that can fly, turn invisible, and sting enemies. Find familiar quasit, summon a familiar with the form of a quasit that can turn invisible and scare enemies. What is a quasit? I think we want an imp here, like a little devil guy to summon. I don't know what a quasit is, but yeah, I think we go imp. Let's do it. Oh, we can just do more. Oh, we can do whichever one we want. Okay, that works for me. Replace spell. Again, the amount of spells you can have fixed in your mind is limited. As you level up, you may wish to replace old spell, new ones. Choose a spell you know and replace it with another. Do we want to do that? What do we have? Burning hands. Uh, definitely command. Yeah, we're going to switch command for a different one. Uh, and then we will add... Um, so I'm confused... All right, so we learn, so basically we learn a new spell here, but then we can replace a spell with like learn. So it's like learning two spells, but then you have to get rid of one, I guess. Blindness, crown of madness, darkness. I just want to make sure there's no hail of blades here or whatever that one is called. Uh, enthrall, hold person, visibility, mirror image, misty step, rave, enfeeblement, scorching ray, shatter, armor of Agathis, blah, 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 blah. I think we take Misty Step. Yeah, Misty Step is cool as hell. Uh, boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Level 3, Warlock. Okay, we got a level 3 Cleric here. Level up, level 3 Cleric. Health increase from 17 to 24. Class features, level 1 spell slot unlocked. You gain a 1 level 1 spell slot, which you're restored on a long rest. Level 2 spell slot unlocked. You gain 2 level 2 spell slots. Which are restored to rest. So spell slots are still a little confusing for me, but I'll try to explain them when we get a chance. Uh, we get all these spells. Aid. Heal your allies and increase their hit point maximum by five points. Five healing and then increase their... Ma so that's different from temp HP, right? Blindness we've read. Calm emotions. Humanoids can't be charmed, frightened, or become enraged. Enhance ability. Bestow a magical enhancement upon an ally. They gain an advantage on ability checks with a chosen ability. We've got Hold Person. We've got Lesser Restoration. Cure Creature from Disease, Poison, Paralysis, or Blindness. We've got Prayer of Healing. 5 to 19 Healing. Heal all allies you can see? Can only be used outside of combat. No effect on undead and constructs. Okay, that's not as great as it sounds, I don't think. Protection from Poison. Touch a creature to neutralize all poisons. Effect to get a granite protection against poisonous influences. Silence. Create a soundproof sphere. All within are silenced and immune to thunder damage. Spiritual weapon summons a floating spectral weapon that attacks your enemies alongside you. Warding bond. Ward an ally. They gain resistance to all damage and a plus one bonus to their armor class and saving throws. Each time the ally takes damage, you take the same amount of damage. And we get trickery domain spells. Mirror image. Create three illusory duplicates of yourself that distract attackers. Each duplicate increases your armor class by three. What does this mean? Trickery domain. I don't know what that means. 
uh, and then pass without trace. Call forth a veil of shadows and silence that gives you all and nearby that gives you and all nearby companions a plus ten bonus to stealth checks. Damn, is this going to be an Astarion playthrough? Because I was going to use all new people, but yeah, she really works well with Astarion, it feels like. Okay, cool. We'll prepare some spells here. Um, Level 2. Known spells. Prepared spells. Bless we want. Cure wounds we want. Healing word we want. Guiding bolt we want. Shield of faith, I don't think so. Spiritual weapon. Interesting that they gave me this already. Uh, aid, healing, heal your allies, increase their hit point maximum. Okay, that sounds amazing, but it's until long rest. Lesser restoration, cure a creature from disease, poison, paralysis, or blindness, warding bond, protection from poison, calm emotions, hold person, prayer of healing, spiritual weapon. Do we do this? Submit a floating spectral weapon that attacks your... Oh, it's a bonus action? Yeah, we'll take that. Bada bing, bada boo. Okay, then we have Astarian. Rogues are pretty easy, usually. Level up rogue, level three. Specialization available. Oh, we got a whole... Okay, never mind. We got a whole bunch of stuff. Chosen subclass, Arcane Trickster. Health increased from 17 to 24. Subclass features. Uh, this is subclass features, so we can actually change subclass. So this doesn't necessarily... This isn't necessarily what we will take. Level 1 spell slots unlocked. Mage Hand. What? Leaguer Domain? When you cast Mage Hand, the spectral hand is invisible and can carry out additional tasks. Also, why does the Starion look different to me? Probably because we have them equipped with different stuff in my other playthrough. Cantrips. Mage Hand. Uh, gain two cantrips. Gain two spells. Gained a spell. Why does it say two spells and then a spell? It's kind of weird. All right, so we have a subclass choice for the rogue. Thief. Thieves use their skills in stealth and larceny to acquire whatever they wish, whether from a third story window or the depths of long forgotten ruins. Subclass features fast hands gain an additional bonus action. That's huge. One action and then two bonus actions. Second story work. You've mastered the art of falling and gain resistance to falling damage as well. Which is whatever. Arcane Tricksters are rogues with clever touch of magic. Using illusions and enhanced enchantments to keep their opponents on the back foot. So we get cantrip spells, spells. So yeah, this is basically the only way to cast magic as a rogue. And then we've got Assassin. You prefer to deal sublime punishment to a single foe at a time, not in a duel mind because a duel implies chivalry. You're too busy getting the job done for honor. Assassinate initiative. You're deadliest against unprepared enemies in combat. You have advantage on attack rolls against creatures that haven't taken a turn yet. Any successful attack roll against a surprise creature is a critical hit. Quick as an alley cat in a rain dark city, you immediately restore your action and bonus action at the start of combat. Meaning you can shoot, start combat, and then get your stuff back. Or attack and whatever. Um, so... We could go Arcane Trickster, but we've already got a lot of magic. I think we go Thief. Yeah, I think we make a Starion a Thief, actually, which just gets him a bonus action, a bonus bonus action, and then also fall damage resistance, which is a huge meh. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using a Starion or not. So, yeah, I think we take Thief because uh, he's an assassin in my other playthrough. And he's very good. Like, Astarion is extremely useful, especially as an assassin. But, yeah, I think we go Thief. Bada-bing, bada-boom. <sighs> then we have g g g g g g g g g g g g g who has what? Level up Wizard, level 3. Health is increased to 20 from 14. He gets a level 1 spell slot, 2 Spell slots level two. He gains two spells as well. What spells? Oh, God, there's so many. Okay. I'm reading all of it because 100% playthrough. I figure we get all the stuff out of the way early. Hopefully people are interested in listening to these uh, spells. I am, but I know it's obviously a lot. Arcane lock. Close a door container with a magical lock. It can no longer be lockpicked or open with knock. Interesting. Blindness. Uh, we've read. We've got Blur. Attackers have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Interesting. Cloud of Daggers, which we have with our Warlock. Crown of Madness. Uh, frenzy spell. Darkness, we've read. Dark Vision. Grant a creature the ability to see in the dark 
out to a range of 12 meters. That could be helpful. Because honestly, yeah, it's kind of annoying not having this. Detect thoughts. What is your mind to read the thoughts of certain creatures while talking to them? We've got enlarge, reduce. Make a creature larger or smaller to affect their weapon damage and strength checks and saving throws. Flaming sphere. Summon a flaming sphere that damages nearby enemies and objects. You can move the sphere. It emits a bright light. We've got gust of wind. Summon a strong wind that clears all clouds and pushes creatures back five meters, forcing them off balance. Hold person. Invisibility. Knock. Unlock an object that is held shut by a mundane lock. Magic weapon. If you use a weapon with arcane energy, the weapon becomes magical, receiving a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls. Melf's acid arrow. Shoot a green arrow that covers a large, covers the target and the ground with acid. Deals 4 to 16 acid damage immediately and 2 to 8 acid damage at the end of the target's turn. On miss, target still takes half the initial damage. We've got mirror image, we've read. We've got misty step. We've got phantasmal force. Deal damage to a creature each turn. The type of damage changes to the last type the creature suffered. Ray of Enfeeblement, Scorching Ray, Sea Invisibility, Shatter, Web. So what does this do? Become able to see invisible creatures and possibly reveal them to others. Web, cover an area in thick flammable webbing that slows creatures within and possibly and webs them. Uh, and then all of these we should have read. I think we're definitely going to take Melf's Acid Arrow and we'll take Misty Step. And then we need to prepare our spells. Ice Knife, Magic Missile, Mage Armor, Grease. Thunder Wave and Witch Bolt. I think we take off Thunder Wave and Witch Bolt and we add in Misty Step and Melf's Acid Arrow. Bada bing, bada boom. And there we are. Okay. Oh boy, that was a lot. Now, it's so funny that we moved like three steps in this episode and yet we've spent an hour here. Welcome to this game. It's so freaking in depth. And in fact, I think we're going to do more boring stuff. At least in relation to the rest of this game has to offer. Because I think we need to long rest and get all of our stuff back, ultimately. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to click down here in the bottom right. We are going to hit go to camp. Camp! At your camp, you can take a log rest and fully heal your party. You can also manage party members, advance relationships with your companions, store items, and eventually change your character and recruit more followers. What do you mean, eventually change your character? What? What does that mean? I actually don't know what that means. So, yeah, we can talk to everybody. I'm not sure how we're going to handle this because, obviously, people probably don't want to watch nothing but dialogue. But uh, what's awesome about this game is that your camp actually changes depending on where you are. So if you're in, like, let's say a crazy cave, uh, you will actually camp in the cave. They could have just always had this one camp. Like, this game is absolutely nuts with how in-depth it is. It's so freaking cool. Uh, so we're looking around and seeing if anybody has an exclamation mark over their head. That's all we really care about. Also, if you have, I think, the DLC or the pre-purchase version of this game, I think you get this stuff. I'm still kind of confused as to what this stuff exactly is. But if we open this up... Oh, Traveler's Chest has all of our stuff. Okay, so this is where we sent all of our things, but we also get these four things for, I think, pre-ordering the game. Uh, I don't know. Shout out to a very kind viewer that gifted me way back when this game was in early access. You know who you are. Thank you so much. Uh, we have Drake General Die, which we'll pick up. We have Bewildering Adventurers Pack, which I don't know what this is. I still don't know what this is. Pick up open. What is in here? Oh, right. Elixir of Hill Giant Strength, Potion of Feather Fall. We're picking up, we're not using, right? Uh, potion of Mind Reading, Potion of Flying, Potion of Animal Speaking, Sun Dappled. Is that Paella? Let's see, Paella, yeah. Uh, pick up and add to where. Can I just, like, keep it in the. I guess we'll just keep it in the thing, because it's in a. It's in a pack, yeah. Uh, we've got Peculiar Clothing Chest, and we've got the Mask of the Shapeshifter here. So basically, if we sort by latest in our items, we've got Peculiar Clothing Chest, which inside has Needle of the Outlaw Rogue. 
Proficiency with this weapon type unlocks whatever that is. Dagger, Light, Finesse, and Throne. Uh, I think we send that to a Starium. We've got the Bicorn of the Sea Beast, uh, which we will send to... Who would look cool with that? Maybe Gale? I don't know. Uh, we've got the Loot of the Merryweather Bard, which is a loot, obviously. Uh, we will send that to camp. And we've got the Cape of the Red Prince, which we will equip because it is sick as hell. Yeah. So these are references, as many people probably already know to Divinity Original Sin 2 and the characters within that game. Uh, you can, for instance, play as a character called the Red Prince, which has that cape. Uh, so yeah, that's what all that is referencing. Peculiar Clothing Chest we will send to camp to get rid of that. And then we've got the Mask of the Shapeshifter, which basically gives you Shapeshift, which lets you transform to look like any other race and gender. Quite interesting there. Okay, so... Uh, Withers is also here. Are we encumbered still? We are encumbered still. All right, should we do some inventory management? This is like the boring episode. Uh, so we could do some inventory management. Scroll over Vivify, revives teammates. I'm not going to go through all of this, but um, keychain, alchemy pouch, camp supplies, stack? Sack. Uh, we're going to add that to wares. We've got our gold there. Scimitar. Let's send some of these weapons to our other people. Uh, yeah, we'll just give him to Gale. <laughs> Gale will be kind of like the the, uh, the 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 pack mule for now. Light crossbow sent to Gale. We got a hand axe sent to Gale. We've got a short sword we'll sent to Gale. Are we good? I think we're good. Yeah, we'll do inventory management either off screen or at another time. Um, so Withers is here. Oh, and he actually wants to talk to us. Okay, let's talk to Withers. We meet again. As predicted, I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. Attack. <laughs> Again, I think our character here is like calculating and not just like attacks everything that they see. What kind of services can a skeleton offer? A mending of the threads between life and death. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. That's incredibly powerful magic. Why is it so easy for you? Because it is my calling. There is little else to explain. You mentioned a cost. What is it? A matter of coin. Okay, so we can change classes here, which I always forget is a thing. Uh, what if I don't have that kind of gold right now? 200. That's outrageous. Or we can just leave. Withers. The strange wraith commands many powers. He allows you to resurrect allies, hire help, and change your class for a price. Of course. So, uh, now we're going to head over to the campfire in the middle. And we are going to end the day. You have enough camp supplies to restore all hit points and spell slots if you long rest. So we are going to long rest. However, there's like a day and a night cycle. You can see somebody wants to talk to us over there. And I think that's it. So let's go talk to Gale. Who's talking to Gale's mirror image. What? Why are you studying your own mirror image? Indulging in a spot of vanity. Handsome devil, aren't I? Be that as it may. Ceramorphosis. What does it make you think of? I have never had this interaction before. This is interesting. If you're about to start a lecture, I'm not interested. Long story short, then. Thanks to the tadpole, we should have developed more than invasive symptoms by now. But we haven't. Our orifices remain blissfully unblooded, our heads remain clear, and our blood temperature normal. Any expert will agree this is abnormal. 
And what makes you the expert? Study. But what is happening, or rather not happening to us, is entirely undocumented. Uncharted territory. The silence before the storm. Something to sleep on. We should get some rest. Gale does raise an interesting point. Why have we not shown signs of turning into a Mind Flayer yet? Well... I guess we'll just have to find out. So yeah, if you try to go to bed, it will tell you if people want to talk to you, which is great. Uh, fully resting. Use the required amount of camp supplies to fully rest, recovering all your hit points, spell slots, and short rests. Not using enough camp supplies to rest will only partially recover your resources. But I've always had enough, so we're going to auto-select. It's going to do 41 out of 40, which we could try to make that not, like, try to save one, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to full rest here and see what happens. So that was a Starion sneaking off. Very interesting. Uh, and we can also change out somebody for a different party member if we wanted to. But I don't know, man. Uh, I want to use Shadowheart and I want to use Gale because I haven't used them. Uh, we could use Lazel in place of a Starion. But I'll be real here. Like I said, these two seem to work well together. Plus, everybody loves a Starion. He is a good character. They're all good characters. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, there are other characters I have not used yet, which is interesting. Uh, we are going to now hit down here and go to leave camp. And that will put us back to where we are. I was expecting in this episode to be able to explore what's ahead of us here. But, uh, yeah, we had, we had a whole lot of upkeep. So we'll do that in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more quicker, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe with the bell turned on. And uh, yeah, let me uh, let me know uh, let me know whatever you want to say. Check out the Twitch and the Patreon as well, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.